Okay, so we're going to look at something hopefully a bit more simple. Um, we're kind of harkening back a bit to a bit of year 12 stuff and there's a lot there's a lot of overlap in year 13 um, sort of force diagrams and vector questions with year 12. So some of this will be very very familiar and then some of this may not be so much but um, yeah you, you will see in a moment they are the concepts you're going to be looking at are hopefully not too too difficult. So this might be a, hopefully not quite as challenging as the, the last couple of uh, sort of videos that I've got you to take a look at. Okay, so we know we know what resolving forces is, right? It's when you, you've got a whole set of forces acting on an object and you effectively add them up and you get a resultant force, okay? Um, and we're just going to be looking at a few questions related to this which are a little bit more advanced perhaps than what we've seen before where we've got multiple forces with multiple angles and it's not going to be as simple as just being given the components so it won't be for example you know 3i plus j and 5i plus 3j what's the resultant force that's that's too easy so instead you might be given a geometric diagram with angles on the forces and you might have to add those up so to just remind ourselves of a couple of things here uh, in terms of when we're adding up the forces uh, the first thing is the resultant force diagram, which I'm, I'm sure I've said several times now, but uh, let's just remind ourselves briefly. Um, if I've got these three forces, oops, uh, let's say these three, for example, okay, the resultant force, geometrically speaking, and the geometry is important, is what? The way you're going to get that is take the forces in any order you like. I'll just take them in the order that I've written them. That doesn't have to be. Take them in any order, put them head to tail. And what you're left with from the start to the end, that's the resultant force. Okay, so that blue vector that I'm left with is the resultant force of those three. And again, just to prove uh, it's not nonsense, let's add them up in a different order. Let's say add the middle one, and then the first one, and then this last one, okay? And you can see if I in fact just uh, shift this, oh dear, hang on. If I shift the blue one into position, perfect, right? So it doesn't matter what order we add them up in. So that's to remind ourselves of the resultant force. And then the other thing is if that resultant force is zero, then we effectively get a force triangle whenever it's three forces specifically. Okay, this won't work with four or five forces, but with three forces, as we've got here, you can make a force triangle. And that only happens when the three forces happen to make a triangle. So let me just reverse engineer that scenario by taking uh, two forces, okay, adding them head to tail, and then my third force, I'm going to draw and force it in such a way that it ends up making a triangle with a little cycle in it. Okay, let's get rid of those two now. And put that there, okay. So those three forces, if I add those up, my resultant force is effectively the zero vector. Okay. It's it's a resultant force of zero. Okay. And what that means is if you've got an object and you've got three forces acting on it, and you know it's in equilibrium, you can just put the three forces into a triangle and then use your knowledge of triangle equations and all that sort of thing, you know, sine rule, cos rule, to figure out the properties of the vectors. Okay, so this is a really cool way that we're going from um, sort of forces and vectors to triangle equations, and we're relating the two in that sense. Okay, but of course that only works when the object's in equilibrium, because then there's um, no gap in our triangle. It makes a perfect, a perfect connected triangle. Okay, so that was the first reminder there. Now let's look at some examples. 
Um, okay, so we've got a flat surface, eight kilogram box, force of 10 newtons applied at an angle of 30 degrees. Work out the acceleration of the box, calculate the normal reaction between the box and the floor. Okay, so we're not using the force triangle concept yet. I think it might be in a later example. Um, this is just getting us to work out a few basics in terms of acceleration. Okay, so what have we got going on here? It's not too tricky of a question, I don't think. Its weight is eight kilograms. And we've got 10 newtons going up that way, which means um, we've got uh, 10 cos 30 going along and 10 sine 30 going up. Okay, what else have we got going on? It's smooth, so there's no friction in this case. That's good. Right, work out the acceleration, calculate the normal reaction. All right, it's not too bad. So the acceleration is just going to be um, considering the horizontal forces, okay? So the only horizontal force is this uh, 10 cos 30. So if we use F equals MA, um, F is the, is the 10 cos 30 going horizontally. M is the mass, which is eight. So that implies that A is equal to um, 10 over eight cos 30, which is equal to 10 over eight root three over two equals five over eight root three. Great, okay, so that's our acceleration, not too bad. Um, let's bring that up there then. So then what's the normal reaction? Uh, okay, that's not too bad either really, is it? It's quite a simple question actually. You've got the reaction there. That reaction plus what else is going upwards? I'm resolving vertically. Uh, we've got 10 sine 30 going up. And that needs to be equal to all the ones going down, which is 8G. So therefore, that implies that R is equal to 8G minus 10 sine 30. And we know that sine 30 is a half, so we get 8G minus 5. 8 times 9.8 .8 minus 5, what's that on the calculator? 73.4. Okay. Great, so that's our answer to part B. It's a... Uh, 73.4, done. Okay, now is where it gets more interesting with the, uh, the force triangles. So, not as obvious as you might think at first. You've got an object, two forces. I don't know why they haven't labeled the magnitudes. Let's just put them on ourselves. Uh, P is 10 newtons, Q is eight. Work out the magnitude and direction of the resultant force. Okay. So what I suggest we do here is um, think about the geometry uh, in terms of you know what I said before with the uh, force triangle. So if I just kind of replicate this diagram a little bit, and then remember that to get the resultant, what I'm really doing is I'm, re um, I'm rearranging the forces head to tail. And then what I'm interested in is the final start to finish vector. Okay, so that's my resultant there. Okay, so can we sort of draw this diagram and also mark on the relevant sides and angles? So the sides, that one was 10 and that one was eight. And then let's think about the relevant angles. So I'm gonna use a bit of yellow. For the eight vector, if I draw a horizontal here with a dash line, what's that angle? Should be 30. What else do I know? How can I bring this 45 into it? 
Um, well, uh, what's the easy? Okay, here's the way I suggest. So if I draw a horizontal line here, okay, what is that angle there? It's going to be the same as this one, right? Because we've got a line crossing two parallel lines. So that's a 45 degree angle there. Which, as it corresponds to on here, is going to be this angle here. So that's um, 45 degrees over there. Great. Okay, so now we can start thinking about a few other angles. Um, what are we trying to find out again here? Good question. The right, the actual value of R. Okay, so we need to think a bit more about the angles. Ah, okay. So this angle here, this missing one, inside the triangle, we can easily get this now, can't we? Forty five plus thirty is seventy five. And because this represents a straight line, this needs to be hundred and five total. Hundred and eighty total, sorry. So therefore this is hundred and five. That makes sense. Okay, what you'll notice now is we've got a triangle, two sides known, the angle between them known, and the opposing side to the angle unknown. This should ring at bells. This is cosine rule. A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos of the angle, um, where A and B are the two sides um, creating the angle. So let's uh, write that out in full then. So in this case, we've got capital R squared my reaction equals 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 8 times 10. That's my uh, 2BC. And then times cos of the angle, which is 105. Okay. So in other words, R equals the square root of all of that. Okay. Plug that into a calculator. Let's do that now. And you get the square root of 205.411 comes out to about 14.33. Okay. Great. So that's the magnitude. That's the magnitude of the resultant force. So this R in blue, let's just change that then. That's about 14.33, roughly. Uh, what else? Okay, we're also actually asked to find the direction of the resultant force. Okay, so that direction, that's effectively this angle. It's, it's a bit narrow to draw. It's this theta here. Okay, so it's the angle it, that the blue vector resultant makes of the horizontal. So the way we can do this is let's bring that theta to the inside of the triangle where we can sort of play with it a bit. Um, by thinking about, okay, what is, what is this angle here that I've drawn? It goes between the red line and the yellow horizontal, it, and it, it crosses over the blue line. What's that yellow angle I've just drawn? That should be 45 degrees, right? Because it corresponds to this 45 degrees here. These dashed yellow lines are parallel. The red line crosses it. Therefore, these are both 45. And therefore, if I have theta here, and the total here is 45, then what is the angle in just that part there? It's going to be 45 minus theta. So let's write that in there, 45 minus theta. We're on a mission to find what theta is. OK. Uh, and now, what we can use is sine rule. Because I've got an angle, which I want to find, opposing a known side, and I've got here again another angle, 105, opposite another known side, which we've just calculated, 14.33. So what we can say is, using sine rule, um, the sine of 45 minus theta divided by the opposing side length, 8, is equal to the sine of 105 divided by the opposing side length, which was uh, about 14.33. You want to make sure when you calculate it that you, you use as many decimal places as you can for that, because otherwise we'll get rounding errors. Uh, when I actually did it on the calculator, I got about 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 14.332, 
you know, too rounded. Okay. Okay. So multiply both sides by eight. So that eight goes, and I'll just put it over here on this side. So we've got eight lots of that. Let's clear some space. Actually, let's just leave that out here. Let's just leave that out. Yeah, the answer would be useful to keep actually. Okay, leave that there. That's our R. Okay, and then we want to find this theta. So what we're going to do is sine inverse. So 45 minus theta equals do sine inverse of all of this. So on my calculator, sine of 105 divided by 14.3322 times eight, I get um, 0.53916 sine inverse of that. And what do I get? Oops. 32.6267 obviously rounded. And remember, that's what 45 minus theta is equal to. Therefore, theta is going to be equal to 45 minus the 32.6267, um, which equals 12.37, roughly. And now let's round it a bit more, just because uh, that let's go with 12.37. Uh, 12.4, I suppose, would be a good rounding, 12.4. Okay, let's write that here. Theta is equal to 12.4, roughly speaking. Great, and that looks about right, doesn't it? Because it's going to be a small angle. That theta is quite small looking. Uh, at least I was drawn it. So we get 12.4, and that's our answer. So you, this is how we're going to use cos and sine rules with uh, vectors in order to find a few unknown values. Okay, and then a final example before I give you some questions. Um, this is the true force triangle uh, trick, which we're going to use here. You've got three forces. Perfect. Three is a good number of forces to make a force triangle. And it's in equilibrium. Calculate the magnitude of P. So what we know is if I, c if I connect up all these um, three arrows, it will make a perfect triangle. And here's where uh, the people creating the diagram are uh, being a little bit annoying because these arrows, I mean, picture for a moment, me placing these head to tail, that nowhere near makes a triangle. So the diagram is completely bogus, really. It's a completely inaccurate dry, uh, diagram. But it doesn't matter because the key details have been given. Math, it's just a mathematical representation. It's just drawn poorly. So, um, you know, if I, you can see it, right? So let me, let me do, for instance, a kind of imitation of this diagram, you know, roughly speaking, that's about what they've drawn there. Okay. Now let me connect those three arrows together. That definitely does not make a triangle. So it, it's a bit nonsense, but it doesn't matter. What we're going to do instead is draw our own version and just um, put the relevant uh, information on it. So really, because P is the unknown, that's the one I'm going to play with. So I'm going to leave uh, the 140 as you know as it's drawn. Similarly with the 100, and then our mystery P value. Uh, mystery p side i'll put down here okay so that's the actual p not this thing it's more like something that looks more like that um that's 140 that's 100 that's p and now let's label the relevant angles so if that's the horizontal that's 45 degrees um let's see if that's the horizontal, that's 30 degrees. And um, if that's the horizontal there, 
That one's theta degrees. Okay. Right, we're trying to find the magnitude of P. So let's play with this diagram. Uh, what else can we do? So again, using parallel lines being crossed, we should be able to see that that's also 30 degrees, corresponding to this 30 degrees there. That's useful. And then we can say here, if, if all this adds up to 180, we've got 30, we've got theta, what do I have to add? This must be 150 minus theta in there. Uh, what else can we do? Let's have a think. Okay, uh, this part, let me just do it in, in green. That angle there corresponds to this angle there. So it must be theta. And therefore, this one in here, in what I'm shading, that must be theta minus 45. So let's put that in. So we can deduce that this is theta minus 45. And then, um, what can we get from that? So if I add this one, this angle, 150 minus theta, and this angle, theta minus 45, the thetas will cancel and the 150 minus 45 it gives me 105. So the total of these two angles is actually 105, which therefore means that this angle here, this must be 75 to add up to 180. Okay, that's great, so that's 75. So let's uh, just clear up that working. And I can now forget about this 30 degrees with the horizontal and just fill in the full angle. That must be 75, so that the whole triangle adds up to, to 180. Great, so we've got um, a completely known angle, 75, and two known sides, and we want the opposing side. Great, so it's gonna be um, cosine rule again. P squared equals 100 squared plus 140 squared minus, uh, let's shift it over a bit, uh, 2 times 100 times 140 times cos of the angle, which is 75 between those two sides. Or in other words, square root the whole thing. Oops, let's put that 100 back in. Square it the whole thing, and that gives us P. Great, and what do we get in the calculator? Let's check it. I'm getting 149.5 as my answer. So that will presumably then be in Newtons, 149.5 Newtons. Great, that makes a lot more sense than what's shown in the diagram. So in reality, this P arrow is actually going to be uh, a little bit longer than that 140 newtons arrow, which makes sense because that's what it looks like more so in my diagram here rather than the, the terrible one over there. Um, could we also find the theta if we wanted to? Is that a possibility? Something for you to think about? Um, I think it is. I think it is possible. You can do that as a little bonus if you want to. I'm sure you do want to. So that is, uh, that's that cosine rule to get the, the P. Remember, you can only close up the full triangle if, uh, in fact, it is in equilibrium. Cool, right, so those are our examples. Um, how many questions have I got for you? Three questions plus challenge. Okay, uh, this one's, this is the first of the three questions, so uh, you don't necessarily have to do them all. If you, if you manage A and you've completely got it, then you can focus your time on the other questions instead. Um, however, if you find it a bit of a struggle, then do try and finish uh, as much of this one as you can. Make sure you really do get it, because this is sort of the fundamental stuff here. Cool. So have a go at question four. As much as you need to, pause the video now. And then the answers are there.
Next question. Box on the floor, being pulled up by an angle. What's the acceleration? What's the normal reaction? Not too difficult of a question at this stage. Give it a go. Pause the video now. Okay, there's your answer. And next, parachutist, classic. Um, so really, it's a mass. You've got two strings um, holding it up, same tension. Ah, but they're not being held up, sorry. They're more like uh, the tensions are effectively acting as forces and you've got a weight going down. And they're moving with constant velocity. That means zero acceleration. So remember, what does zero acceleration tell you about the resultant force? Have a think about that and see if you can prove uh, the tension. I'm going to be using uh, force triangles here. Pause the video now. Okay, and this is uh, apparently the equation that you partly use for that. Effectively, you should be creating a force triangle of the three forces, the two tensions and the weight, uh, using a bit of um, triangle um, equations that you're aware of demonstrate that the side length of the t's are effectively 20 times root 3g. Okay, and apparently that equation helps you with it. Okay, and then the challenge question. So um, going a bit back to ij notation, but not as much information as you might think. Um, see if you can form the uh, force triangle with these and find what the missing resultant force is. Have a go at that one. Pause the video now. Okay, and there's your answer for F1 and F2.